Yeah, thank you everybody for joining today. My name is Jordan Pruce. I'm the sales manager here at DaySmart Pet. Um, I've been with this company for five and a half years, um, watching it go from you know a desktop software to a cloud-based software and, and watching expansion and growth throughout the many years. So it's been a great company to be, to be a part of. Um, on this call, we also have Christopher Reno, who is our sales engineer. Uh, if you'd like to introduce yourself, Chris. Yeah. 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 Um, I'm Chris. I've been with this company for around 11 years. So uh, just as Jordan got to see it grow, um, I've been there too. And um, I would just like to give a quick heads up. I have a, a dog here with me and he's currently watching the front window for stray cats. So if you hear any barking, that's probably it. Just disregard, please. <laughs> Excellent. Uh, well, we love our pets here, so um, you know that's that's something that we take seriously as our pets. So thanks for sharing that, Reno. Um, and if I call him Reno, you know we've worked together for years, <laughs> so it is Chris, but I go by his last name, Reno. So <laughs> bear with me on that. Um, yeah, well, we can go right into it because I do want to keep it time at the, the last five, 10 minutes to go any questions. So essentially what we want to do is just give you an overview of how DaySmart Pet can, you know, help manage your business, whether it be grooming, uh, daycare or boarding, we could accommodate all of the above. Um, and, you know, really, we're just going to go into it as in starting with the appointment book. I mean, that's really where 90% of your day is spent on this appointment book. And so Chris is going to, you know, kind of do a quick demonstration of how that works and then we'll go from there. So if you want to start, yeah. Chris, uh, go ahead. Perfect. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, as Jordan was saying, you know, like we're, this is primarily an appointment booking software. It does quite a bit more, but here's a, a just a quick overview on uh, how our appointment book will help you manage your day. So uh, right now we're looking at the grooming calendar. I have uh, two employees on my schedule. I have their uh, day of appointments all laid out right here. But uh, to book a new appointment, we've made it as simple as possible. It's basically just a matter of choosing the groomer, choosing the time. And then we uh, present you with this really simple appointment card where all you need to do to book the most basic appointment is add the pet that's coming in. Um, if they're already in your system, you can search for them by pet name or uh, the pet owner's name. You probably know the pet's name more commonly than you know the pet owner's name. Um, or like if it's a brand new client, we have a link to just quickly add them into the system. Um, it'll just ask for basic information such as contact info and then um, you know basic facts about the pet, their name, weight, breed. Um, and then from there, all you have to do to get the appointment scheduled is add the service they're coming in for. And for uh, returning pets will actually show the services that they've had in their past appointments, so you can just quickly add them. Uh, otherwise, you would just search by keyword to find exactly what you're looking for. Uh, but that's it's as simple as uh, just adding those two things, just the, the pet that's coming in. Oh, I, in a previous appointment, I changed the price for them, so we'll just ignore that. Uh, but yeah, once you have the pet added and then the service, uh, it will know how much time to reserve. It'll give you any heads, like a heads up if they're missing vaccinations that you require. And we also have a notification that this person needs to fill out a form, which I'll get to later. Um, but uh, yeah, that's that's booking for a grooming appointment. But we also have a, a daycare appointment and a, uh, appointment book and a boarding appointment book. The daycare schedule will kind of function more as like an attendance sheet. So in my example, I have a space for high energy dogs and a space for um, senior or lower energy dogs. So this will help you manage the uh, you know, maximum capacity of each space that you can have pets in for daycare. Um, from there, we also have a boarding appointment book and this will you know, kind of function the same way as you know, the other two. The key difference is that this is managing um, available kennels or suites, runs, you know, whatever you call them. Uh, but this one gives this calendar gives you a visualization of you know, the days of the week, each run, and then which ones are occupied with existing appointments. And uh, the key difference, as far as the calendar for boarding versus daycare, is that you know the boarding calendar is giving you a visualization of um, for each run what range of days they're actually occupied for. 
But as far as booking appointments for either or for any of these uh, modules, the workflow is the same. It's just going to ask for slightly different information. The boarding calendar will ask for the date range that they're coming in, but everything else is kind of standard. You know, just add the pet, add the service, and then you have an appointment booked. Um, yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Well, thanks for that overview on the appointment book. Um, and so, you know, now we want to transition into online booking. So, you know, talking to the clients over the last five years, you know, some people love online booking and some people hate it. So then that's one of those things that people are nervous that um, what if they, you know, what if what if it doesn't work the way they want them to? We like to ease your mind a little bit and show just how easy online booking is and the control that you do have as a business owner uh, when it comes to online booking. So sure. uh, online booking can, can integrate with uh, your Facebook account, your Instagram accounts, and uh, your current website. If you don't have a website, we can also provide one for you. So yeah, if you wanna show that, Chris, I'd appreciate it. Sure, yeah. Yeah, so like, so what on, the online booking feature boils down to is um, your clients making requests. Um, this is the form that they would fill out. This is what can integrate with Instagram and Facebook or your existing website. Um, but like Jordan said, if you don't currently have a website, we have options for you there as well. Uh, but from the client's perspective, they're, they're really just completing this form. They're going to, um, you know, pick the day that they'd like to come in, the service they'd like to come in for. And then with just those two choices, we can kind of ignore these other two. These are just ways to kind of filter it down even further. Uh, but with just those two choices, the next step will show them all of the available start times that they can pick from. And this is working hand in hand with the appointment book to determine, you know, like what times are actually available. So when uh, we're looking at, you know, this person requesting a dog bath for a large breed, um, this service, I have it set to take an hour, um, an hour of the groomer's time. Um, so when we're looking at nine o'clock as available, that's because this employee has nothing on their calendar between nine and ten. So nine is available as far as the appointment book is concerned. Um, but you can go further as far as like settings go to kind of control how people book. You can uh, control like what um, what time intervals people can book in in the first place. So I have it set where people can book on the hour, but you could have it you know every 30 minutes, which would mean 9, 9.30, 10, 10.30, and so on would be available. Um, you can control what services can be booked. If you have services where it just doesn't make sense for a client to be able to you know book their own appointment for that service, you can exclude you know whatever you want uh, from online booking as a whole. Um, you can control which employees actually take appointments through online booking. If you have some employees that want requests coming in through online booking, but others that don't, you can pick and choose, you know, who would be able to take appointments or who a client could request for an appointment. Um, once they pick the time, it will ask for basic information about the pet owner first. So their name and contact info. You can also ask for an address if that's relevant to you. Um, and then it'll ask for basic information about the pet. So name, weight, breed. We have uh, the full AKC standard uh, breed list here, but you can edit this. Like if you're, you know, for example, not getting many, um, uh, I know you're getting doodles. Maybe you're not getting many Argentine dogos. You know, you could remove that from the list. I was going to use this as an example, but I don't know if I can pronounce it. Um, so you can control the list of breeds that they would be able to pick from. And you can also add all of the doodle varieties. If uh, in my experience talking to business owners, most of the pets that come in are some form of a doodle. So you can add those to the list. Um, then you can also require that they leave a card on file. I know um, one of the concerns a lot of people have about online booking is people booking appointments that they're not really that serious about. Um, this would ensure that they kind of have some skin in the game if they're making this request. Um, if you have like a, if you wanted to implement like a no-show or a cancellation policy where you might charge a fee if they violate your policy, this would ensure that you can capture that card info and use it if they, you know, violate your policy. You can even spell out exactly what that policy is so there's no surprises, you know, to the client if they no-show and then all of a sudden they have this charge. Um, you can't even move forward unless this 
is completed or filled out um, if you require this step. So the final step I'm just going to describe since I can't show it without putting a valid card on here. Um, the final step is just them reviewing what they're requesting just so they can make sure that they're asking for what they actually want. And then when they submit it to you, you can handle this part in two different ways. Um, you can have these come in to you as requests that you'll have a chance to review and then accept or decline. Um, or you can just give them the power to book the appointment. Either way, whichever option you choose, um, you'll be notified when new requests come in or new appointments are booked. So um, one way or another, you'll be able to monitor everything that goes on here. But that first option where you review them kind of gives you a chance to be like a buffer and you know just ensure that the requests that are coming in make sense. You know, like you don't want somebody requesting a a groom for a small breed dog when in reality they're bringing in an Alaskan Malamute. You know, like that will that option will kind of give you a chance to make that correction and you know um, price it accordingly. Um, yeah. Awesome, awesome. I appreciate you showing the online booking. And like we said, uh, you do get full control. So if you do want these to be auto booked, uh, they can automatically go to your appointment book, or if you prefer them to be a request only so that you get the final say before you approve it, it'll come through as a request. And then the receptionist or manager or owner, whoever has the rights to do it can approve. And then that appointment will get placed on the appointment book. So, um, I just wanted to make sure that that was clear to everybody. So thank you, Chris, for showing that. Uh, you know, the next thing we wanted to cover is the digital consent forms. Uh, you know, for many, many years, this was something that uh, people had requested and we used to work with an outside company to do our consent forms for us. And then right prior to really COVID, March, 2020, we uh, built these digital, uh, digital consent forms. And it's just been a huge, a game changer for our clients is having it all integrated within the software. So Chris is going to kind of show you yeah. uh, what our digital e-sign consent forms look like. Yeah. So the way I would look at it is if you have your clients filling out any paperwork at all, uh, you'll be able to replicate that those forms and then um, automate and digitize the process from there. Um, so I'll use our liability waiver template as the example and this is kind of bare bones this is meant to be a starting point so you can you know customize this around the reality of you know what your form needs to be uh, but this is where you would design that form on the left hand side is all the different ways that you can ask questions or ask for info that even includes the ability to ask them to upload a file um, also you can ask for a signature which i can show better in the preview um, so if this is like a liability waiver, for example, and you need them to sign off, you can ask for that digital signature. That's not my real signature. Um, so basically, like I said, any paperwork you have your clients currently filling out or paperwork that you might need to have them fill out going forward, you'll be able to replicate those forms here. And then the real way that these forms work is this step right here where you get to choose or, or set the conditions under which a client would need to fill out this form in the first place. So for example, I could say this form is required each time an appointment is booked. So every time they book an appointment, they would be asked to fill out this form. But I can also go one step further and say that this is my form for boarding services or daycare, or I, you know, I can get specific for what, so if you have a form for boarding, a separate form for daycare, a different form for grooming, you'll be able to account for all of those scenarios here. And then the whole idea is that now going forward with these forms designed, these conditions set, just by you booking appointments, our system will know what form, if any, that client needs to fill out. And then it will automatically text or email that form to them. So, so they basically have between the time the appointment's booked and the actual day of the appointment to just fill it out on their own time. And then ideally, they they follow that, they fill it out on their own time, then they show up and they don't have to worry about it in person. Um, you will get clients that don't cooperate fully, right? Like um, you're asking them to fill out these forms, but they you'll have people that show up and don't fill it out like you ask them to. Um, on the, let me zoom in to the day view. Um, on the appointment itself, if they have not completed the form, 
you'll get a little um, alert, a little icon. So uh, it'll be like a little clipboard. Um, my internet is slowing down because I'm sharing my screen here. Um, but you'll get uh, this little icon here indicating that they have not filled out the form you've asked them to. And if you click on the appointment, you will have this option right here, or the, you'll have the notice again, but you'll have this option right here to complete now, and you can either just resend it to them through email or text, or if you click fill out form now, it will just pull it up on this device. So if you have a computer at your front desk, you could just have them fill it out on your computer. I always tell people just, you know, why not resend it to them? They're, they're likely walking in with their phone in hand anyways. Um, you know, this way you can kind of keep your, their hands off of your computer. Like your, you know, your computer's probably all go, already going through enough stress with all the dog fur and everything that's kind of floating around. Um, you know, uh, so yeah, you could just have them, you could have them fill it out for, uh, on your computer, but I would just say you're probably better off resending it to them. Awesome. Thank you so much for showing those forms, Chris. And the next thing that we wanted to cover is, you know, one of my favorite pieces is the integrated credit card processing. Yeah. Um, yet again, talking about years, you know, for many, many years, we partnered with outside companies to do processing. And then the last couple of years, we actually took over that piece and we now have day smart payments. So now you have your software and your credit card processing all done through us and by us. Um, we do have equipment that we can send you that's all integrated fully with the software. So we want to show you kind of the value, not only on rates and things like that, but really the value of just having everything in one spot. So Chris, take it away. Sure. Yeah. So um, so when a pet comes in, well, first off, you'll be able to check them in. Um, this will actually change the color of the appointment just to kind of indicate that the pet's in the building. And this will also send a push notification to the employee or to the groomer's uh, phone, letting them know that they're, uh, that pet's ready to begin. Uh, but then when the client comes in, you know, the service is done and they're ready to pay, uh, this is what the checkout process will look like. So the first step is where you would handle uh, like what they're paying for. So if you needed to add on additional services or um, if you sell any retail, you know, this is where you can kind of manage upselling. We'll even show you what products they've purchased in the past. So that could be a clue on what you might be able to upsell this time around. Um, but when they're ready to pay, you just proceed to payments. And um, I mentioned that, you know, you can require that they leave a card on file through online booking. If, uh, if, you, if you follow that process, um, the, the card that they leave will appear in the in the um, checkout process where you're handling the payment. So if this if this customer had a card on file, you would see the last four digits and then uh, the option to just process the card without them even needing their card present. Um, otherwise, if they're paying in person, you would just hit credit. And then this is, uh, there's actually not that much to show you here because this is where the customer is doing the work. Uh, this is where they will insert their chip into the device that we provide you. Uh, this is where they will leave a tip and confirm the payment. And when they do all of that, that will that data will transmit back here and just record the fact that that payment was made. Um, it's all integrated. You're not going to have to leave our system and process the card outside or elsewhere. You know, it's all handled right inside of the system. Um, and yeah, and then yeah, like the other big piece is the online booking part, where you can require that they leave that card on file. Awesome. Thanks, Chris. Yeah. And, and like I said, it's one of those workflows that talking with clients over the last many years is, you know, when you have two separate systems for your credit card processing and your software, you know, you're risking a lot of manual, you know, data entry. So, you know, if you have someone working at your front desk and they have to manually go into our software and type in the amount each time that manually go over to the credit card side and enter that amount, you know, you're hoping that there was never a fat finger or an extra zero or any of those things. You're kind of relying on every person to manually type in everything perfectly, which we all know does not happen. So having the full integration eliminates all of that. So it's all in one spot. So I just wanted to throw my, my two cents in here with that. But yeah, if we can move forward to the next piece, um, two-way texting. So two-way texting is part of our text reminders that allow us to have a full communication 
um, with our clients through texting. So if you want to show that, Chris, I'd appreciate it. Sure. Yeah. So, so yeah, as Jordan mentioned, uh, you know, we have text reminders. So I'll start with that. So um, as the day of each appointment approaches, our system will send out a, a, a text message, just reminding them that they have that appointment in the first place. Uh, so that can help mitigate the amount of no-shows that you get. You know, the reason most people don't show up for an appointment is that they just forgot it, it was scheduled in the first place. Uh, I'm guilty of that. So like, but the appointment reminders will help reduce that. Um, but we, as Jordan mentioned, we have two-way texting as well. So um, right inside of the system, you can have these text conversations with your clients. So for example, you know, the text appointment reminder goes out, the client that was meant you know, to come in for that appointment, maybe they forgot that they have this other very important thing going on. Maybe they, uh, I don't know, like a wedding or a doctor's appointment that they just absolutely cannot miss, but they forgot about that when they scheduled the appointment. They would be able to reply to that appointment reminder text and, and let you know, you know, I can't make it because I am not organized and I forgot I have something else going on. Um, so having this right inside of the system uh, basically eliminates the need for you to have to pass out personal cell numbers just in order to just be able to text back and forth with your clients. Uh, another key thing is that this keeps those text conversations in your database. So, um, you know, if like a groomer has this one-on-one -on -one relationship with one of their clients, um, you know, instead of having those conversations on that employee's phone, you can keep them in the system. So if for whatever reason that client wasn't able to respond promptly to a text, um, you know, you could have someone else that's also monitoring these conversations. But I think the key thing is that, you know, this keeps everything in one place and then also um, helps you kind of keep your personal life and work life separate as much as you can. You know, like um, if you're passing out your personal cell number so people can text you, you're probably getting a text at one in the morning telling you that they want to book an appointment. You know, this kind of helps you keep that separate, you know, and, and keep your real life uninterrupted uh, by work if that's what you're trying to achieve. Thanks, Chris. Appreciate that. Uh, so we've got about seven minutes left here, so I want to make sure I leave at least sure. five minutes. Yeah. And so let's kind of quickly do the, the last two here, the, the text and email marketing overview and the reputation management, please. Sure, yeah. So um, we have text marketing. We also have email marketing. Text marketing is way more effective nowadays, though. Um, but our text marketing basically allows you to build automated campaigns. Uh, to target your clientele. So for example, we have a few pre-configured ones like happy birthday and remind clients to book again. Um, let me get rid, rid of that, but uh, I'll use remind clients to book again as the example. But basically, it's really simple. You start by just designing the message that you wanna send out to your clients. Um, so you'll write that out here. There's not much to see with the text. You know, you're basically just trying to get people to book an, uh, book an appointment through the message you write out here. Um, but the real way that these campaigns work is this step right here where you get to choose who it should actually reach out to. So in this case, the purpose is client retention. Uh, this campaign will look for people that do not have any future appointments scheduled and that their last visit was more than you know, X number of days ago. And these campaigns will run repeatedly on a daily basis, looking for people that meet this criteria. And then it will automatically send these messages out to to clients that meet this criteria, and um, you know, hopefully help you get your appointment book uh, filled up with appointments. Um, Jordan also mentioned that we have this feature that we call reputation management, and there's not a whole lot to look at here. It's going to be mostly me just kind of explaining how this works. Uh, but what this feature will do is, after a client comes in for their appointment. Um, our system will follow up with them and send them a text or an email that starts by simply asking them to rate the experience they had between one and five stars. If they give you four or five stars, we would then direct them to your Facebook, Google, or Yelp profile so they can leave a review online telling the world you know, how great they felt about the, the groom that their dog just uh, came home with. Um, on the flip side though, if they give you three stars or fewer, instead of sending the one star person over to Facebook so they can make their one star feelings known to the world, we just ask for their feedback. 
and that feedback will go directly to you and nowhere else. Uh, we're not gonna, like I said, send that one-star person over to Facebook, but we still wanna give you a chance to, you know, um, or give them a chance to let you know how they felt. And now you have this opportunity to see how they felt and now maybe you reach out to them and address whatever the problem was, if there even was a problem. You know, some people are just not that generous about leaving reviews, you know, like if you look at Amazon, you'll get, you'll see one star reviews because uh, the product they purchased came in damaged. That's Amazon's fault. That says nothing about the product. Um, but yeah, so basically the whole idea here is that we're um, kind of automating that process for collecting feedback. We're only sending people that felt great to social media so they can leave a review, but we're still kind of acting as a buffer uh, to the people that didn't feel great. You know, we're giving them a chance to vent and explain how they felt so they can be heard, but we're giving you this opportunity to kind of um, be that buffer, you know, reaching out to them right after they had a bad experience will likely keep them away from your social media. You know, there's nothing really stopping from someone going to Facebook and leaving a review, but we're giving you this kind of like this window of opportunity to reach out to them and address things and you know, just by simply contacting contacting them and letting them be heard will satisfy most people and you'll likely, you know, get that second chance to kind of keep them as a customer. That's awesome. Yeah, and I mean, to, to echo what Chris was saying, you know, I know for me personally and, and most of the people I know that before I go to any place, whether it be a hair salon, whether it be a pet groomer, what you know, really a restaurant, I'm going to look up, I'm going to Google it and I'm going to see what other people are saying. And, and that's just how the world operates nowadays. So, you know, sometimes people do not under, you know, realize how important it is to have uh, good reviews online, whether we like it or not, that's just the way the, you know, the people operate nowadays. So having your reputation with Google, Facebook, and Yelp, you know, clean five stars consistently and being able to reach out to clients that you know, may have said something negative and, and try to save them and fix, you know, whatever issue they had um, is a good way for client retention. So mm -hmm. thank you so much for that, Chris. And, and like I said, for the sake of time here, um, I did open up the chat box here. So I haven't seen any yet. Um, is there any questions that anyone wants to put into the chat box there? I can respond to those um, while we have a minute or two left. Yeah, and Chris, so is there anything else like while I'm waiting on any questions that you wanted to, to say here for this last minute? Sure. I mean, we just kind of gave a high level overview of some of the like um, the more popular features. Um, but that just scratches the surface of what this system can do. And um, I, I have this menu pulled up of some of the other features here. Like we have really extensive reporting. Uh, pretty much every bit of data that this system will track has a report covering and covering it and giving metrics. Uh, we support retail sales, so if you sell any products, we'll track inventory and give reporting on, you know, the total shelf value, for instance. Um, we support gift cards. We have uh, we support physical gift cards and uh, e-gift cards. Um, we have payroll reporting, which will uh, report on commission and hourly wages. Um, one thing that a lot of people will ask about is, can you can you give access to each employee to the system? And when you give access to each employee, can you limit what they actually have access to? And the, the quickest way for me to boil that down is pretty much everything that you can look at or click on in the system, you can limit access to. So like each groomer could you know, be able to sign in and view their appointment book, but you could block them from seeing certain reports uh, that, you, that they have no business looking at. Um, we also have prepaid packages. I know like if you, if you operate a, like a daycare facility, uh, you might have deals where if they prepay for a certain amount of days, they maybe get a percentage off of that total amount of days. Uh, with the packages feature, you can pre-sell those days and then our system will track the remaining balance that they have available to use um, as they use them. Um, but yeah, like there's there's a lot more to the system and you know, to, you know, for time purposes, we can only kind of get to a few things, but yeah, if you wanna learn more, 
Um, I'll pull this back up. Um, this would be one way to reach us. I don't know, Jordan, did you want to give like a, a number out too? I don't know if there's a number. Yeah, there's a number on the last slide. So that's my personal email oh. right there, jordan.pruce. And then we have our phone number here um, with another sales email there. So that's my personal email, jordan.pruce at daysmart.com. And then if you go to the next one. Oh. It wasn't letting me click on it. That's oh. PowerPoint for you. Here yeah, we go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so right there is the uh, 800 number, 800-527-7600. Uh, any of our salespeople will help you out. Um, you can also email sales at daysmart.com. But yeah, there's no questions here. So I appreciate everybody that was able to join today. And um, yeah, we look forward to hopefully helping you out in the future. But other than that, Chris, I really appreciate everything you did today. And yeah, I think that went really well.